Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and hello if you're new. In today's video, I will be showing you how to create the six site analysis diagram for my previous project, which was a theater. So I know I've done this video in the past, but you guys seem to really like this. So I thought I'd show you how to actually prepare a base diagram, which then you could use to create all of these six diagrams. Stage one of the site analysis, the preparation. So first of all, we're going to start with Digimap. And I'm really sorry if you guys don't have access to Digimap but I think you could use a CAD mapper or Google Maps but it will kind of have a different result and a different process. So if you go to Digimap and then go to your site, any site kind of has different styles so choose one that you like. I like the Victor Map District and then on the left in the map content you can see that it has different layers which is really good for us as we can export all of these layers and add them into Photoshop. So I'm gonna hide all of the different layers and then start one by one starting from height information and I'm gonna export that as an A3 to keep it high quality. And it's always best to export bigger size than you think you need just so that you don't have to go back and do the whole thing again. And I'll also have all of the files linked down below so that if you guys want to follow along, hide a settlement name. I didn't know that you can hide it. <laughs> wow, that could have saved me a lot of time, which you'll kind of see what I mean in one of the diagrams. For the natural features, railway, roads. So then afterwards, we're done and then we can hop on onto Photoshop. Some of the techniques I use today, I learned by experimenting with Photoshop tools and others in a class by Daniel Scott on Skillshare. In this class, Daniel, who is an Adobe certified instructor for Photoshop, dives down into the fundamental tools of Photoshop and how to use them the right way. I find Skillshare truly amazing to expand on your current interests or talents, to deepen your knowledge of things you are interested in, while also giving you so much space to discover something completely new to learn. They offer thousands of classes on all sorts of topics such as Photoshop, Illustrator, and even architectural classes that I've already spotted that I'll link down below for you. I think it's the perfect platform to make the most of this year, to develop new skills, and develop your creativity. Because Skillshare is an online learning community, so classes are so easily accessible. You can watch in your own time at your own pace. They are also affordable as the annual subscription is less than $10 a month. I'll also have a link below to give you two month free premium access to however many classes you are interested in in only available to the first 500 that click the link below do check it out if you're looking to develop your personal and creative skills in 2020 and thank you so much to skillshare for sponsoring and supporting channels like mine open an a3 document same as all of the images and then place them onto your document and as you can see they are aligned perfectly Change this blending mode to multiply and then we are going to crop it. Going to select my site and color that with red as it will need to be in all of the diagram. So then I'm going to rasterize all of the layers, hide them one by one. And as you can see, if you zoom in, you can see that Digimap leaves this watermark. If you want to remove it, you can use the magic wand tool, select it and then delete. But there's also a quicker way. If you right click and then go on to color range, you can then select that color and then delete that separate. But unfortunately, you will have to do that for each individual layer because sometimes the color might be too similar and it will not pick it up properly. Once you're done with that, you can then start on creating your base diagram. So you can keep it as a rectangle, you can make it into a square, whichever you like. If you want a circle or a rectangle, all you have to do is draw in the shape and literally just add a clipping mask. But for me, unfortunately, I took the long way, which is kind of a very tedious task, which I really wanted it to be more organic. So I'd have to add a layer mask to each layer and then from there start painting in black and kind of erasing a few areas.
then save that photoshop file into different other photoshop files such as traffic, cycling, public transport, figure ground and then open all of them onto photoshop and then you can start your diagrams. The first diagram we are going to do is the figure ground diagram. Select the layer of the building, apply your color overlay in black and as you can see you're done. Please don't select every building individually because I have seen it before and there is an easy way. And this is where you can see how I should have known that you can remove the settlement name but I didn't. Let's just say Wolverhampton has a few more buildings now, it's fine. No one's gonna notice unless they watch this video. The second diagram which is traffic to get traffic information go to google maps and then write traffic and then you could see the traffic for your site you would normally have to do this for three days out of the week with three different times but i got no time for that so i literally just chose a time that is kind of on average i'd say and then i snip tooled it and then added it onto photoshop lowered its opacity Use that color slightly a bit darker than the original color and then just paint it on traffic. So orange obviously for slow traffic and then green for fast traffic. I mainly went just over the ring road. You can do as far as you need to. And in the end, this is the final diagram. It's pretty easy. Should take you not more than probably 10 minutes, I'd say, or even less. Now let's hop on to the other diagram. Why am I saying hop on? Where did, where did that come from? Anyway, the third diagram is public transport. I'm gonna use a bus icon, add that to my Photoshop file and then color that with blue. Turn that into a smart object so it doesn't lose its quality. Rename the layer obviously and then scale it down and then move it to wherever there is a bus stop. The more the merrier, more your bus stops you have on your site, that means it has good public transport, it's easily accessible, so I'm also going to add the train station. So I'm just going to find the train station icon, scale that down and add it. We also have a bus station, so we select the building layer, use the polygonal lasso tool and then click on this and what it basically does, it kind of intersect the selection. You can see it selects the station pretty easy. So I'm gonna color that with the same color as the bus icon so it kind of matches. And then we're going to do parking kind of the same way. Uh, this time the icon, I just left it purple with a P on the top. Also charging stations, I really like to add this bolt. It kind of adds a nice color to the diagram but again you can use whichever icon you'd like. Convert it to a smart object so it doesn't lose its quality. Just place it wherever you need to. We're going to go back to Google Maps and if you click these three bars on the left, you can then choose cycling and that basically shows you the cycling route. So again, I'm going to snip to that and copy it, paste it onto my Photoshop file, scale it, lower its opacity. And then just play around with the blending mode. Sometimes it'll work, unfortunately this time it didn't. The only one that I really liked was Difference and the cycling route ended up being this kind of neon purple which I really liked so I decided to use that color. Happy coincidence. So on a new layer, I'm going to start painting all of the cycling routes. It would be really helpful if you are from the area as you can kind of fill in the gaps and add a few more detail that Google Maps doesn't know which is pretty handy. And as you can see in some areas it is dotted, if you click on here, you can go on to brush properties and that will change its brush spacing instead of painting every dot by itself because that will be just crazy. And I'm just gonna rescale that, make sure everything fits properly. That is basically the final diagram. 
The next diagram is literally going to take you about two seconds. I am not even joking. All you have to do is hide the building layer basically road pattern or street pattern and all you have to do is kind of add text explaining its character and where it was originated from but that's basically it from a graphical presentation so now we're gonna move on to land use and i know guys i hate this diagram too i always leave it to the end because it takes a bit of time start first with making the key because if you don't make the key things could get kind of confusing add rectangles and then if you color overlay that with a color and then copy that layer style and then paste it onto the other rectangles you basically color all of them at the same time And then press on the FX, hop the color overlay option again, and then you could just change that to any other color that you like. I'm just doing some rough colors right now. I'll probably change them into something a bit more vibrant. Name the key, so residential, commercial, retail, and all that. I'm not paying too much attention to the key right now because at the end of all of the diagrams, I'll be adding one key for all of the diagrams. To actually select the buildings, Use the polygon lasso tool to kind of rough out the area so you kind of tell this is a residential area residential is pretty easy to know because of its form and kind of spacing but the problem with land use is you kind of have to go to google maps and see every building individually If you go on to the building layer copy and paste it if you press ctrl shift and v it will copy and paste what you selected in exactly the same location and then you can color overlay that with a different color but you can also go the other option if you want to go into a bit more detail and then select individual buildings here and there and then color those with a different color if they're commercial and so on and then once you are done, you will have this beautiful diagram of different colors and it's kind of my favorite to look at at the end, but it's kind of a bit annoying to actually make. I have took a very blurry screenshot from one of my previous diagrams just to get the colors because I really like the colors that I chose. The diagram looks so much different, so much vibrant, so much life in it and I actually really really like this one. And let's move on to the final final diagram. We are almost there guys, we can do it! So the last diagram is the Wolverhampton Area Action Plan which stands for WAP. Kind of reminds me of a Burger King burger but that's not the point. In the UK every city has an area action plan, I'm not sure if it's in different countries but they should do. It has diagrams and information about what the council wants to to improve in that area so it's really helpful because you want your design to fit in with that proposal what is really helpful in your site analysis is to kind of do a diagram in which you summarize the area action plan so we're going to use all of the same techniques that i've used in the previous diagrams we're doing a dotted line based on what i previously showed you And you could also add a few circles here and there to indicate any public realm improvements, any connection improvements. You could add arrows through Photoshop if you didn't know. If you click on the line and then from the top here, you can then select to add an arrow to its start or end. But I don't really like the arrows from Photoshop, so I like to add my own arrow from Google. You can then combine them to make longer arrows or bigger arrows, and then you just have to add it wherever the diagram has arrow. It kind of indicates connections between two areas or two streets. Going to add that in different colors. And then basically just add a few more icons, stars, to finish off the diagram, what I found was a website online for designated heritage assets which basically tells you listed buildings, conservation area. Instead of actually making this diagram yourself, all I did was took a screenshot of it, pasted it onto Photoshop and then lowered its opacity, added a clipping mask and then painted over it with black to kind of erase the areas and make it more blended. I only just realized my silly mistake. I used the eraser instead of a paintbrush, so technically I will not be able to hide and reveal, but you get the point. Do use a black brush. 
And that is basically it. The diagram looks like we've worked for hours on it. it. Didn't take us as long as it could have. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you guys like this kind of longer videos, chit chatty, or a more shorter videos, quicker and more scripted. Also, let me know how your 2020 year is going. If you are planning on learning anything, if you have any new year resolutions. Mine is pretty much to just survive. 2019 has been such a hard year for me so I'm just trying to focus on how I feel in 2020 and just to be as creative as I can be as productive and as happy as I can be and literally not focus about specific goals and specific achievements but do let me know what you guys are doing i love you guys so much and i miss you so so much thank you so much to everyone who has been following me on instagram this past few months um i've been connecting with a lot of you and it really meant so much to me so if you guys are not following me on instagram you should do it like right now i'm rosa shururu and i'll see you next time